Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting. I appreciate you being at the channel today. And if you've not yet done so, please hit that subscribe button uh, uh, to get more future information on what we're doing and information that we're providing to help you grow and develop your business. If you find the information beneficial, certainly consider hitting that like button. And as always, if you would, you know, check out the links below for addition, additional ways and additional opportunities that you can grow and develop your business. Now, our topic today are the key steps to finding the perfect gym salesperson. And I know I talk to a lot of folks that, uh, you know, I just can't seem to find the right person. We just can't seem to find the right person. You know, where is that person? Where is that person? And as I would say in kind of most anything, you know, we want to put the accountability on us. Okay, let's don't put the accountability on them. It's up to us to create this environment to be able to find this person. What are these strategies? And I want to give you some basic strategies, some things you can follow today, because I know a lot of folks, when we do this, even though we're looking for a salesperson too often, we're kind of just looking to fill a slot. Hey, I need a salesperson. Here's someone who's interested. They've got some experience. I'm going to put them in. And just because they have experience really doesn't mean much. I mean, one of the great rules to follow when you're doing all this is hire who they are. You know, what we're looking for is character and, uh, and behavior and, hey, do they show up on time? You know, the things we can't really train, you know, hire who they are. You know, don't hire necessarily what they know because we can train what they know. I mean, the sales part, I know everybody wants sales experience, but, you know, we can train that and we can train it in such a way that's, uh, that matches kind of what your culture is and how you run your business. So let's, let's jump into a few of these and things that you can do. You know, number one, identify the specific needs for this new hire. Specifically, what is it that you're looking for? And, you know, I can recall back when as a, as a brand new manager and I was having to hire folks and I had never done it before. I didn't know really the first thing about it. And, uh, and I remember running ads for this and there's really only one thing that I wanted. You know, I kind of identified in the ad what, the, what I was looking for, but here's the one qualification. I want a big smile on your face and I want enthusiasm. You bring me somebody that's got a big smile on her face and has a lot of enthusiasm you know, I can train the rest of it. And we had great success with that. And it was really that simple. And we kept that ad running a long, long time. And we had some marvelous people walking in because they all, they all shared the same characteristic. They all had a big smile on their face and they all had uh, a lot of enthusiasm. You know, we would sit down, train them up, and they did real well. Okay, uh, so identify the specific needs. What exactly are you looking for here? Too many folks want you know, not afraid to ask for the sale. Okay, I get that. We need to ask for the sale. But for me, I can train them that. I can show them simple ways to do that. I can't really train them that enthusiasm or that discipline or, you know, that being that happy person. You know, those are choices that they're, make, that they're making. Uh, number two, you know, write the job description. You know, have a very detailed job description of what you expect this person to do. Here is what the expectations are. And it's not, we're not trying to beat them over the head with this. It's just say, hey, what are we, what are we looking for? You know, that's a job description. Make sure you have that written out. Uh, number three, we want to reach out to the right candidates. Now, let me say this, when you're running ads and you're out looking for folks, you know, typically what do we put in the ad? You know, here's what we're looking for, you know, send over a resume, uh, send over income requirements, uh, to here's my email, here's my phone. That's typically what it is. And you've got to really sift through an awful lot sometimes, um, you know, to find that person. It, it can wear on you a bit, you know, to, to talk to that many people that maybe are not qualified. There's two things that we like to do here. Number one, when we place that ad, certainly we want to see resume. We like to know income uh, requirements and things of that nature. But also we're going to say, hey, also send over a 30 second video, or maybe you want it to be 60, but send over a 30 second video of why you're the best person for the job. Because A, I want to see if they can follow directions, number one. Number two, I want to hear what they have to say. And how do they present themselves in that video? I mean, our, we've had folks do it from the beach, okay? And that's really not what we're looking for there. So that first kind of qualifier, okay, to make sure that we're reaching out to the right people, we're going to weed some of them out by asking them to send over a 30-second video of why they are the best person for the job. And then 
if we get that video, it looks good, then in many cases we'll send over like a like a, a, a health club, you know, philosoph sales philosophy test, very simple test, okay? Uh, just trying to vet out a little bit, hey, are we way too strong in sales? Uh, you know, are they much stronger than what we want? We're not trying to put the customer's head into a high script here. Are they much too strong? Or on the other end, are they much too weak? So how do they fare? Are they A, B, or C here? And that'll give us a sense, and maybe it would disqualify, maybe it wouldn't, um, but it'd give us a better sense of kind of who we're talking to when they come in. So we'll do the video, we'll do the test, and, and a lot of times this can help us make sure that we are talking you know, to the right candidates and, and who we're looking for. Um, next on our list here is you want to develop a clear interview process. You know, have a way that you do this. Don't just sit down and wing it. Uh, just like in the sales process, you know, we tell folks all the time, you know, if you're going to wing it, you know, you're not going to get the results you're looking for. So don't wing it here. So have a specific interview process and how you like to do this. And for those of you that are interested, you know, feel free to hit me up. You can check out the links below. Feel free to hit me up. I'll be happy to send you over uh, an interview checklist that we put together. Whether you're interviewing for sales, you're interviewing for management, you're interviewing for front desk, you're interviewing for Group X, you know, a whole variety of questions that are unique, you know, to that particular group of people and, and what you're looking to do. So have that process together because you're trying to find out as much about this person as you can. You know, it's not just, hey, do we want to make sure we find the right person and we know why we want to do that. We want to have success in our business, limit turnover. But also this person that wants the job, we want to make sure we're doing right by them. I mean, they're looking to get this job because maybe they need to buy school supplies for their kids. They need to put food on the table. They have to pay rent. You know, it's a serious thing for them too. We just don't want to put them in there because we're trying to fill a slot. So have a definite way you want to go about this. Have an interview process. One of the other things that I like to do in every interview is I like to role play. And I'm not necessarily role playing for the job that they're uh, interviewing for. I'm going to role play for the job they already have, wherever they've been. They've been working at, you know, such and such a company for a year, such and such a company for six months. You know, I'll assume the role of the customer with that company and they'll assume what their current role is and we'll role play it. Because what I want to see here, I don't know how quick, how quick do they think on their feet, okay? But also I want to see how well versed are they after having been with that company for 12 months? How well versed are they after having been with that company for six months? You know, did they take to training? And even if they weren't trained, did they seek it out themselves? How good are they? Because there's a good chance I'm going to see that same progression or lack thereof, you know, if they come on board with me. So, you know, develop a, a very clear, you know, interview process on this. And then finally, make sure you have a strong onboarding program. Um, one of the biggest mistakes, and I see this one frequently, we get someone hired and we just throw them in there. I mean, I know we had someone recently, they had a new hire and they put them in charge one day. They were in charge of sales one day and it did not go well. And, you know, part of this, no matter who it is, you know, one of the cornerstones of, you know, being successful in sales is, you know, high self-confidence, high self-esteem. And, you know, you put someone in there before they're ready, man, you can destroy that out of the gate and cause you a problem that sometimes you can't recover from. So make sure you're onboarding these folks with the things that they need to be successful. You know, how to handle a telephone inquiry and all that entails. You know, the sales process, you know, how we sell personal training, you know, how we sell retail, you know, how we follow up with customers, uh, you know, what's our prospecting look like, outbound phone calls, you know, make sure they're well trained on that and take, you know, it won't take you long, take you, you know, four days, you know, with, with some good training, maybe four or five hours a day, really go through it, role play with it, you know, give them some homework, test them on it, you know, make sure they're ready. It's well worth spending those at extra time to get them ready. Don't just throw them in there and, and hope and think that on the job training is going to do it. Because, you know, one of the things, too for owners you know for managers that are in charge of this and running this on a day-to-day -day basis i mean nothing will wear you out quicker and for those for you folks that have been through it you know nothing will wear you out quicker than having that constant 
turnover and that churn and having to go through the exact same thing just over and over or way too quickly. You know, we want to really, you know, do everything we can to make that right decision to get that right person so that, you know, essentially they're in it for the long haul with us because we know, you know, that we're going to be in it for the long haul as well. So I hope you all found this information beneficial uh, today. Uh, my name is Jim Thomas. If you did like the information, you know, consider hitting the like button below. We appreciate that. And uh, we hope you all have a great day.